it's a new day. Uh. <laughs> you know, uh, when I was in the news business, it, uh, we people change a lot. We had a lot of bosses. I think I had nine news directors in the 15 years I was at CBS. And each one of them came in and they all did the speech, you know? It's a new day around here. It's a new day. And all, we'd all look at each other and be like, mm-hmm. Seen that before. <laughs> but you know, it, we say that a lot. It's very, it's, it's in, it's in common, common vernacular. It's a new day, it's a new day. We just throw it around like, like and then, then we go about doing business as usual, just like any other day, you know? And uh, it's such a popular thing. I was noticing that It's a New Day is the name of a lot of songs. Uh, James Brown wrote a song, It's a New Day, back in the 70s. Now, I- interesting song. It was around the time that the women's liberation was really taken off in the late 60s, early 70s, and he wrote a song that was kind of today would be considered PC incorrect. I mean, it just, it was a song to tell women how they should be treating their men in this new day. <laughs> like, you know, y'all should still be hanging out, making them happy, you know? It's like, wow, James, what a, wow, don't feel so good, you know? <laughs> then Alicia Keys recently wrote a song called It's a New Day. It's really nice. I don't know if you like Alicia Keys. If you do, I do. She's got, she celebrates the new day. She, she's just like, it's a new day. There are no limits. There are no limitations. And when you think about it from our perspective, science from my perspective, that is the way the new day works. There are no limitations in the day. The only limitations of the day are the ones that we set on the day. We can move beyond wherever we've been before in the new day. And Will I Am has also got a song called It's a New Day. And his new day, he declares that we have made it this far. I've made it this far into this new day, and I'm going to take it a step further. He declares it. And that's how we should reach, reach into the new day. Declare it. Declare it. Like Alicia Keys says, there are no limitations to my day. I'm going to celebrate this day. I'm going to move forward into this day. Kind of like Nina Simone does in that feeling good. You know what she does, right? It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life, right? That's a great tune. That's a new day song right there too. So it's it's very popular. Michael uh, blue 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 blue. blue. <laughs> right him. <laughs> he tried. He tr- I mean he did all right, but Really, when you're, sing- when you're doing a cover on a Nina Simone song, really, dude, are you serious? Come on. It's Nina Simone. Stop it. You know? <laughs> I love the idea of a new day. It's like it's a fresh canvas. You wake up in the morning, and it's a new day. There it is before you, this huge canvas. And then you take your dreams from the night before and your intuitions and your inspirations and and your intentions and you just start painting them on that canvas and going about your day and keep on moving through the loss of your balance. I love that. That's such a great idea. I mean, we do. We're we're taking these steps, but we just know how to catch ourselves. But really, we're just falling forward and, you know, trying to fight gravity along the way. And (laughs) in our minds, there are also these same kind of falling forward gravity kind of things, our ideas and our limitations and our habits and the ways, old ways of being. We get tripped up by them, but we have this, this wonderful brain. We have this creativity. We have this urge to express that allows us to step back and catch the next step and move forward and keep on going through our day. So as you're painting the canvas of your day, remember, it's a new day. And one of the things I always like to think about, initially there were 24 time zones when they set them up around the world, but now some governments decided we want to be a half hour this way, and then you got places like Arizona that don't know when they want to be on, on what time, <laughs> and, you know, and Indiana where they got half the state on one zone, one half the state in the other zone. But if you think about it from the old school, 24 zones, you can start your day over at any time of the day. You know, I, I used to do that when I was at my job at Founders. There were times, because as an administrator, Susan will tell you, you're on the phone and you're talking to people, you're, or Lane, you know, you're talking to a vendor and they're not giving you the answer you really want to hear. In fact, they're like, where are you? I'm giving you money and you're treating me like this? And so you get off the phone, you're a little frustrated. I would sit there and I'd think, okay, what time is it? And I love the new iPhone where I've got the little cl- calendar with the global time clock on it. And I'll just look and i see where, ooh, Bally. <laughs> I'm starting my day over in Bally right now. <laughs> I'm on the beach. I'm sitting in one of those houses that's sitting in the ocean. My feet are in the ocean, you know. I'm drinking a virgin Mai Tai. Don't laugh. They make them. You know, you can start your day over anytime you want. 
You know, that's why some people, I think Michael Beckwith always says, good morning, no matter what time of day. He never would have the problem I had at the beginning of service because he just says, good morning, no matter what time it is, because it's always morning. It's always time to start over somewhere, somewhere. I love the way flowers deal with a new day. So many flowers, they feel the sun and they open for the new day. And then when the sun goes down, they close back up. Makes a lot of sense. You know, they open up because they say, hey, you know, the guys that are pollinating me, the pollinators aren't around at night, so let me just close down. I don't need that. Or they're thinking, you know, if I stay open all night, then dew will fall on my petals and then I'll wilt a little bit, so I'll close myself up so I don't have to deal with the dew. And then when the dew's done, I'll open back up again. Flowers are so smart. They know how to do this stuff. They really handle the new day in a lovely way. And we are that smart too. We know how to handle the new day in a lovely way, to approach it with a sense of optimism and a sense of joy and a sense of promise and possibility. My friend Quentin Denard um, says, yep, new day, woke up, everything's working, I'm getting about my business. You know, that's what he does every day. It's all working, I'm getting about my business. When you get to your new day, get about your business. Uh, George Bindle, in a lovely book called uh, Holy Days and Holidays, writes, Every day is the new beginning of our growth. And as we grow, we learn more perfectly to apply the principles which we say we live by. Hmm. Which we say we live by. We say we live by them. You don't say. Right. <laughs> exactly. Do we, though? The great news is every day is a new beginning to begin to live by those principles. Every day is a new beginning to learn more perfectly to apply the principles. So if they're not working for you today, tomorrow's a new day. We can apply them again. I love the way the universe loves to renew for us and keeps us in a sense of renewal. So as we go into this season of peace, this season of light, we know that whatever principles we've been trying to apply to our lives that have not always outpictured the kind of life that we had imagined, we still have that possibility in each new day. Now, this time of year, we're celebrating a big time new day, the new day of the Prince of Peace coming to the planet. You know? Now, however you feel about Jesus and the Jesus story, it's a kind of cool story. And it's interesting, you know, it doesn't really matter where you slept or where you were born until you become famous. You know? <laughs> like, the Jesus story... The, the whole thing, the manger and the Bethlehem, Nazareth and the walking and the Herod and the king and the Magi and the shepherds and all that, pfft, who knew? It wasn't until pfft, he exited with this great philosophy and then the books were written and he said, you know, we need a backstory. So this worked, they wrote this really wonderful backstory. Because, you know, Matthew was written like 80 years, 75, 80, some say 40, who knows. But sometime, Jesus was gone, okay? He'd already done his thing. And they wrote this story. It's a very simple story of simple people. You know, here's Mary, this young woman who has this vision, and it comes to her as we know the story, right? And here's Joseph, who's going to escort her and stay with her and be her betrothed. Just common people that end up in a manger, and this child is born, and shepherds are there to witness it. More common people. You know, the Mary story is pretty incredible. How many times Mary has come to people since that time? And it's always, it's very, I don't think I've read any spaces where Mary has shown up and it's been like the king who saw her. It's like three kids hanging out in a field or some, 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 some person who's needing healing. It's, it's the common man and it's the everyday person. It's us. So this is a story of us. This is a story of how we get to share our Christ consciousness with the world. See, the principle of Jesus is a principle that is retained within each and every one of us. And the principle is simply amplified and enhanced through that story. Even the, even the, the idea of, of the Magi, you know, the Magi really weren't kings. We've just interpreted them to be kings. They were just wise guys that were cruising around. Not wise guys. <laughs> <laughs> where's, where's Alan? <laughs> you know? They had some cool information. Now, what I think is really interesting about the Magi appearing in this, in this birth story, though, remember, it's a backstory, is it's, it's helping us to understand the universality of what's going on with the Christ consciousness. You see, it wasn't just a, a Western idea. 
It's an oriental idea. They bring in the east. See, they came from the east. They bring in the eastern teachings so that we understand this is the same teaching that's cir circulating around the world. And this is what Bindal talks, uh, uh, what uh, Yogananda, Param Paramahansa Yogananda. Ah, this is, if you haven't read this book, it's so wonderful. It's a two volume set. It's awesome. And he says, the message of the heavenly host to the shepherds in the countryside of Bethlehem was on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. See, that's why, that's why the Magi were there too, because that's an on earth message that peace and goodwill toward men and women is for everybody. You see, that's what the, the heavenly host, and the heavenly host, <laughs> news for you, newsflash, who's the heavenly host? We are. We are. Heaven is the kingdom that lives within our consciousness. You know, you know the story of the, um, the, uh, what, what do they call them, samurai that goes up to the, to the wise monk and he says, teach me, I want you to teach me about heaven and hell. And he says, the monk says, why should I teach you anything about heaven or hell? Look at you, your blade is rusty and your clothes are dirty and you smell bad. And the, the samurai's like, <gasps> and then the monk goes, that is hell. <laughs> he goes, oh, and that is heaven. Wow. Great story, huh? That's where it is. It's all happening right here, right here, you see? And so we get to host, be the host of this story, and the story we get to take with us is that on earth, peace and goodwill toward all is the way that we should operate on this planet. That's really the central theme around this whole guy's life. It was like about love and law and bringing us a way of understanding this, understanding that there is one power, that power is God, there is one law, and that law is good, and there's one impulsion, impulsion. There's one urge, and that urge is to express through love. See, if we express through love, and we use the power that is good, understanding that that power comes from the divine, which is the oneness, we cannot help but heal the planet, to bring a loving feeling. Because see, love is all about a feeling. My friend Carol McDonald would always say to someone, God rest her, she would always say to someone, thank you for allowing me to feel love. She never said I love you. She would say, thank you for allowing me to feel love. When you say I love you to someone, and you say I love you to someone, the love is coming inside of you. You're feeling the love, you know? It's nice that you say I love you, but you're having the experience of it. And if we use that feeling with faith, that's how we can apply it. If we use that feeling with faith, that's the key right there. Have faith in the power of this love. Have faith in the power of God. Have faith in the power of the urge to express this love in your life. And you're on top of it. Dr. Holmes says, love has nothing in it that can hurt anything. And faith, nothing in it that can deny any good. See, if you're operating from that paradigm, if you're operating from love, you're not doing any harm. If you're holding on to faith, your good cannot be denied. It's going to come to you. This is simply how it works. Love through law. And they've got these guys that are running around now spreading love. You know, see the signs, the, the uh, hugs, free hugs. Have you ever seen those or seen people do that? They're, they're just spreading love. They're just reaching out and saying, you're cool, I'm cool, come here, let me give you a hug. Started in Australia. And he was at a, a, a business park doing this, and the, the landlords tried to kick him off. And he went to the courts, and they finally won. And he says, you know what? You can give free hugs no matter what. You know? But the law tried to stop that. Love cannot be stopped because it doesn't hurt anything. And he had faith that it was a good idea, and now the idea has spread. Our CSL teens in Denver did that. They did the love thing, and they did it so well that when Barack Obama, who was running for office at the time, showed up, they were able to give him one of these be love bracelets. They had walked right up to him, you know. It's really great. That's how love works. He says, Dr. Holmes says, it is only through love that we find the presence in its greatness and can use the power in its fullness. He's talking about the capitalized it, so we know that means we're talking about a quality of God, we're talking about the divine. It is only through love that we can find the presence in spirit, the, the power and the greatness in spirit, and this power gets to be put into its full use through the operation of this love. 
So often we hear in our teaching that there is love and law. But the truth of the matter is Dr. Holmes is very clear about this. He says love operates through law. You see, it is the love operating through the law that takes the impersonal nature of the law away and allows it to be a warmth and a giving experience. It's not cold and automatic in our, in our teaching. You may think that the mechanical universe is what he's talking about all the time because we hear so much about the, the law and the principle being immutable, but what makes the principle that is immutable comfortable is that it's working as law and, the, and as love, and the love brings the feeling tone and the presence to it. So as you're working yourself into this space of peace and spreading the idea of peace and goodwill on earth during this time of year that is supposed to be enough, like the stores. Uh, a friend of mine's son or daughter just opened up a, a, cl uh, a toy store in Santa Cruz. And uh, uh, the Santa Cruz is kind of interesting. They're, they're, they're into local. They shop local, not global. So people are like flooding this store because it's a local store. They're walking in and go, we're so grateful that you're here. And she's got lines in the store. It's like sell it, she's selling all of her stock super, super fast, which is great because this is the time of year that's going to pave the way for her to stay open for the rest of the year. And that's how stores work, right? This is the money time of year. This is the, the ninth inning, the bottom of the ninth. They got to get all the money right now if they can, and it helps them cruise through the rest of the year. And there's so much talk this time of year for the same reason for our consciousness. We talk so much about love and peace and joy and wholeness and goodwill toward men so that we can fill our coffers so we have enough to get us through the lean months, October, <laughs> September, August, you know, when you want to just tell everybody that they're number one as you're driving down the freeway, right? <laughs> This, this, is, this, is a good, this is the time you got to pull that stuff in and hold this idea in your mind and know that the urge, the ultimate urge that's in you, the ultimate resplendent good emerging through you, urge, ultimate resplendent good emerging through you is the feeling of love. Have faith in that and understand that. You see, this is our part. Matthew 6.22 says, well, it's actually Jesus saying it. Matthew wrote it down. This is supposed to be the words of Jesus. If thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Not a lot of words, powerful idea. What we're talking about, thine eye be single. See, the eye, the eye is the, is the, is the doorway to the soul how we see. Now we've got two eyes. So if we're talking about the eye being single, what are we talking about now? We see, we say, oh, I see. So now we're talking about our consciousness. So if our consciousness is single, if it is on one idea, and that idea of being love, then we will be light. Our whole experience of life will be light. We will shine. We will walk lighter. We will be lighter. We'll be in tune with more ideas. So this is the beauty of having your mind singly focused on the one power, the one God, the one life. You see, your ordinary consciousness is quite small. Your ordinary everyday consciousness is concerned with did I get enough stuff at the groceries? How come that guy has 22 items in the one, you know, in the <laughs> checkout stand? That person parks so close to me, I've got to get in on the passenger side. That's what your everyday ordinary consciousness is all about, you see. But if you could get to this thy, thine eye be single consciousness, now you're thinking about, wow, they might have parked that way because they were really in a hurry. I hope everybody's okay in their life, you know. Oh, that guy parked and cut me off because oh, he must be late. I wonder if his kid is okay at school. You know, we start to get a little broader in our thinking about stuff as we get our mind and eye single so that we can be the light and shed the idea that there is peace and love enough that I don't have to be worried about the guy having 22 items. So what? You know what? I'm standing in a grocery store in Costa Rica where my dad lived for a while. You go to the store, you want some orange juice? There's no orange juice. When are you going to get orange juice, guy? No say. What do you mean no say? No say. I mean, I don't know. They don't know when there's going to be orange juice. And you're standing in the store. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The lights go out. Why? Because every day at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the lights go out. Golly gee, look at where we are. You look at what we live with. Look at the beauty. We gave away, what was that, Mary? 30, 30, bas uh, 30 baskets? Uh, 93 bags of groceries? Something like that, you know, for Thanksgiving? Wow. We gave all those toys away. 
man, that's beautiful. We live in a prosperous, abundant place. What, what bother do we have, have living in, in a small, ordinary consciousness? We should be living in this large space, that single eye, all the time. Because life is good for us. It's great. But we use our free will to sometimes snack on lack. You know, we just 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 bite down on it. And, mm, I ain't got enough, and I'm never gonna have enough. Or we do it the other way around. I'm not gonna spend my money on that. I gotta put it in the bank. We hoard so much. That's a lack consciousness too. Hoarding too much good is a lack consciousness. You know, you can't hoard your good. You can't. You gotta let it flow. Let it go. If you do, then you're moving beyond the limits of hate and evil. Know, and you're moving into that place of love. You see, we are at free will to express. We have free will to express ourselves, but we do not understand that we have, we, we have an experience to express it. You see, uh, I wish I had, had spent more time with Johanna on this one, on the liberty and the, and the freedom. So we're free. We have free will, you see, but then we have this liberty. We are allowed by the divine to choose whether we're going to express our free will or not. That's the liberty that we live with. The free is already there, but if we allow ourselves to align ourselves with the truth of who we really are, then we can live in this beyond place, in this place of large consciousness. Back to Paramahansa, Paramahansa Yogananda. The cradle of goodwill of Christ's love holds the infinite consciousness that includes all beings, all nations, all races, and faiths as one. The cradle of goodwill. You see, the cradle of goodwill is that larger space, larger than the ordinary consciousness, and that cradle of goodwill is held within us. We have this because we have that Christ's love within us. See, the story of Jesus is not the great exemption. He's the great example that we have within us. It's a, it's a principle. It's not a man. It's great that we can celebrate the guy. I like to sing Jesus songs. I like to even tell, I like to freak Christians out and go, yeah, I was saved by Jesus because it's cool because I have been by his teachings, you see. It's wonderful. His teachings have taught me that the Christ consciousness is within me, the cosmic Christ, the urge to love and to be at peace with all. And when I can do that, when I do that, I tap into infinite consciousness and ideas flow to me that I had no idea I had access to. It's really sweet. There's a guy in Portland, Oregon, the common man, back to the common man thing, Portland, Oregon, Anton Cobb. He was reading an article about a 14-year-old girl who started a food bank for feeding homeless people. And she could feed for the price of somebody's lunch which nowadays, have you noticed lunch is like $15 no matter where you go? <laughs> Johanna and I go to this restaurant, we tried, for, we tried, we would try to order stuff, and, 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 and every time it would be $15 each. And we go, okay, okay, this time we're not gonna have drinks. <laughs> and, it would, we, and it'd still be $15. <laughs> it's like, how's this working? Okay, let's go somewhere else. So we go to another place. It was $15 again. <laughs> Well, for $15, you can feed six people in America. In those other parts of the world, you can feed 30 to 100, but six people. So this guy, Anton Cobb, he has what's called the Our Lunch. Have you heard of it? Small H, big O, Our Lunch. He sits in the, in the park in Portland. He's got a little sign, I'm skipping lunch. Would you care to join me? And the people that join him in skipping lunch put their money in the lunch bag, and he sends it off to the girl with the food bank. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to have to go do that. I did that at, at Wilshire, Vermont one day, and, I, and people looked at me like I'd lost my mind. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, what's wrong with you people? Give me your lunch money. I was like, I turn, you know, I know you got it. It's in your pocket. Take off your shoe. I know you got money in there. You know, I turn into the bully, right? Give me your money. I'm going to try it up at the mall. <laughs> I know. I've heard about that mall. That's why I'm going to try it up there. So if I, I got all your phone numbers in my phone. <laughs> I may have to call you for, I'm, I'm down here at the Simi Valley PD. 
I was just, I know, it was free lunch. I gave him some hugs. I hugged the cops. That's what they put the handcuffs on. Click. <laughs> Don't hug me. Click. <laughs> oh, God. But this is the season when we get to catch the spirit. This is the season where we get to arm ourselves against all the onslaughts of lack and limitation and fear and negativity and all the things that tell us that we are not loving, that we are not holy or not complete, that we don't have free will, that we do live in a lack and limited universe, but we don't. We know we don't. I mean, come on, yesterday, you saw those showers falling out of the sky. That was gray, wasn't it? That's not lack, that's prosperity, baby. You know what I'm saying? So if we can live at peace, first as individuals, first as individuals, then we get to spread that out to a world heart, a world that works for everyone. We're joining the, the CSL community at large as a part of the CSL centers that'll be doing world that works for everyone next year, and it's already started. I don't know if you remember Dr. Susan was here with the little, the booklets that the kids made. We're sending those booklets around the world. Uh, one is on its way to China, One's going to Ukraine, we're gonna send some to Canada, we're gonna send some to Jamaica, and the little book that says, send me to one of your friends somewhere, and when I'm all filled up, send me back to CSL See Me. So we'll see how that goes as they go around the world. We're spreading the, the message of love and peace around the world, starting with our own cosmic kids. See, this is what every, each of us can do, something like that, something small. It's just a little thing. They just made this artwork, and one day somebody said, hey, why don't we do this with it? Boom, here we go. That's how it happens. Catch the season spirit. Live in the cradle of wholeness, you see. If everyone, if everyone lived the ideals exemplified in the life of Jesus, having made those qualities a part of their own selves. See, it's not just, it's not just living the ideals. It's making that a part of your own self. So much so that it becomes an automatic activity of your life. A millennium of peace and brotherhood can come to the earth. We have the, we have the opportunity to do that. The world is so small now. <coughs> For a seven billion populated planet, we are so small. You can write a joke on your Facebook page and in 30 seconds, somebody in Tokyo could be telling that joke. Why not skip the joke and write a message of love and peace and wholeness? and have someone spread a message of love and peace and wholeness 30 seconds later in Dubai, right? Or in Moscow, or in Belgrade, or in Ankara, or somewhere else around the world. We have that ability, each and every one of us. We have that in us. That, that idea will come to you. You'll think, oh, I know how I can do it. And when you, when you say, oh, I know how I can do it, do it, do it. Remember, remember the Magi, remember the gifts. See, the Magi brought these gifts because they wanted to understand that and celebrate this idea of peace. And you have gifts. Each and every one of us has gifts. Gifts that honor spirit. Gifts that put spirit first. Gifts that allow us to spread this message of hope. Not the material gift. It starts with the inspirational gift. And it turns out to be material, that's okay. I like getting gifts. I'm trying to get Annie to give me that <laughs> thing, you know? <laughs> I love gifts. I think he might have a gift for me a little bit later. I don't know if I want it, but I, you'll see. You'll see. But we have a golden opportunity in, in front of us. We really do. Think of yourselves as a freshly opened toy store. Fill yourself with the presence of spirit, the peace, the love, the joy. Know that it's a new day and that you are living life in a new way. Spread the message. And so it is. <laughs> teasing. Don't start. Don't start. Let me do the affirmation, and I'll come right over there. All right. All right here All we right. go. All right. You ready? All right. The sparkle of the divine lights my way as I step into this new peaceful day. All right, there you go. Tweet it, post it, text it, share it with somebody. Put that on your Facebook page and dare somebody to share it.
Yeah. Truth or dare. <sighs> you know, the, the meditation this morning was so sweet, and I was just thinking about peace the whole time, and, and, and the prayer that Johanna set us up on, and, and, and knowing that we are this divine presence, and just feeling the lavish abundance. Let's put that into prayer right now, shall we? So I'm just knowing that there is one life, that life is God. That life is my life and your life right now. Each and every person listening to this voice, feeling the power and the presence of spirit moving through their bodies, is in tune with something so much more than the everyday experience. You see, we are so much more. That's why we are constantly filled with new ideas, new hopes, new dreams, new inspirations called to see squirrels here and there and everywhere. That's our life. And so when life deals us a blow, when life deals us something that doesn't seem like it's something that we know, what I know is that we do know. We know how to move beyond it. We know how to move through it. So we use our consciousness and step into the Christ self of each and every one of us and get a spiritual download of truth that brings about healing and wholeness, that moves us from lack and limitation into prosperity and abundance, that takes us away from not enough of and goes into this place of I have everything I need right here and right now. As you affirm that, as you take your mind to whatever situation is appearing in your life that does not bring about joyness, joyfulness, and, and harmony and wholeness, if you have a situation like that, turn your mind now to love. Turn your mind to peace. See peace. See love. See the divine. And know that that is the only power that is operating in life. And through that, and through fully understanding that and embodying that idea, the spiritual download will come, and the answer is delivered. This I know is the truth. This I affirm for each and every person right here and right now. I do it with a sense of gratitude in the power of prayer, in the reliability of spirit, in the conviction that as I say my word, it is done unto thee. And so feeling complete in this prayer, and knowing that spirit hears the word spoken, I release it lovingly into the law, knowing it is done and complete, and so it is. Mm -hmm. ah. Yes.